for a new video on autism in girls um basically i want to do a video on this because i think autism portrays itself differently in girls to the way it does in boys whether that's due to nature or nurture we don't know uh, well i don't know maybe there somebody might know but i don't anyway um so yeah i'm just gonna talk about oh my camera's a bit lopsided some of these boys may experience as well as girls but i think they are more commonly traits that girls have however like i said boys can have these too yeah anyway i'm only talking from a girl's perspective because i am a girl i'm kind of relating this to me as well because this is what i have kind of my traits and things etc etc and most of these you might not even know about autism so you might learn a few things and you might be a girl with autism and you might not have known this and about yourself and you might not have known that it's an autism trait because i actually learned a few things as well i'm going to be doing a monthly q a um on my youtube channel however i'm gonna be getting the questions from instagram you should go follow me on instagram if you want to be involved with that anyway anyway let's get into the video um First thing, a lot of autistic girls, boys, whatever, I'm just going to, no, no, I'm just going to say girls, but boys, just, if you're watching this and you feel the same, just don't, just don't get offended that I'm not called, I'm not said a boy, but anyway, 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 what am I doing? Why am I rambling like this? Anyway, right, uh, misunderstanding of social norms, which, uh, if you don't understand what that means, it basically means that, like, the secret rules of society of what you're supposed to do it doesn't really apply to me because I don't really, I don't really understand them. Um, an example, uh, when I say rules, I don't mean like rules by like, like the law, like written rules. I understand them, but rules such as respect your elders. I respect everybody the same. When I first meet someone, I will respect everyone the same way, whether they are five years old, whether they are... 85 years old age to me i don't get it like what why why would you respect someone that's older are they do, do you grow nicer with age do you grow are, are you born are you born bad and then you and then when you grow up you turn nicer and you you should you should because i've met people that are old and grumpy and don't don't deserve my respect so why should i automatically respect them because they're older doesn't make sense in my head I don't get all that like i give i treat everyone with the same respect with all with respect i don't get either um people need to earn your respect i think you should just respect everyone the same and if they do something that makes you not respect them then fine that's something they've done but i would say just automatically treat everyone with respect and then if they do something horrible or they do something that doesn't deserve your isn't deserving of your respect then don't respect them but yeah anyway anyway so that would be one example another example when i was a child i would used to not understand the need to wear clothes so i'd walk around the house naked basically my house and i didn't understand that it's my house i can walk around naked. why would i need to wear clothes like that didn't it, 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 it was my house do you know what i mean like that was that's what I mean by social norms, things that you would automatically do because society says so. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, you should wear clothes. I didn't understand. Now, that's a bit different. The first example was something that now I don't understand. This is kind of something as a child. That's kind of examples by what I mean by that, if you didn't understand what misunderstanding of social norms meant. Number two. By the way, I forgot to mention this book. I, it's a very good book about women on the spectrum, as they've said in the title. Uh, I am a third way through the book and basically, it's just, it basically answers, it's like questions and answers basically from someone who is a woman who is autistic. So yeah, you should definitely go, if, if you're interested in all this, what I'm talking about, then you should definitely go 
buy this book because it's very good um at school i had one best friend who happened to be a female and i basically in groups i would kind of just let her speak because i didn't really know how to act in a group so in a way she would kind of speak for like in a group like oh, i find this very difficult to explain basically i was shy and in a group i wasn't shy when i was with her this was before i mastered the whole masking thing um which i have spoken about in another video and it is a female autism trait so you should definitely go watch that um before i mastered the whole masking thing and kind of created an identity for myself i kind of just let my friends speak for me and i'm kind of like that now um as in a sense of i don't trust my own decisions and especially decisions regarding other people like in in, in social situations so i kind of let other people do that for me to be honest i found an example actually i found quite a good example i would not know how to respond to text messages so i would get other people to respond for me because i like to people that i weren't sure like i weren't really close with and i was like texting them you know because that's what people do don't they people text people on a night and i soon realized that that's what you needed to do to make friends so i would if my friend was here um for a sleepover or whatever you do um i would ask her to um like reply to the message because i wouldn't know how to, what to put like i didn't understand what to put to people still kind of like that now i don't really text people i don't really it's not really me unless i'm like really really close with you unless i'm really close with you and kind of know how to communicate with you now um texting for me is not something that i particularly enjoy and it's and phone phoning is even weak i don't know no people phone me i purposely just don't i just don't answer sorry sorry if you phoned me before but i will not answer ever because i don't i don't like phoning people even if i am close to you to be fair uh facetime's a little bit better but mm, i don't really like seeing my face all the time which is kind of contradicting seeing as though it's one which i do right now another point is in the friendship thing they are very clingy we are very clingy to one friend i would say that i'm quite friend i don't have very many of them and when i have made a friend i'm like oh my god made a friend I made a friend the best friend for life and that that a good thing we're very loyal so yeah another thing we have we're very opinionated people i would say that i'm quite opinionated and i find it very difficult to get other people's points when i am adamant that i am right and most of the time i would mm, yeah i am right um but you know we are very opinionated and i would say like strong we have very strong personalities and if someone says something that isn't right no matter who it is back to the whole social norms i will i will tell them so yeah and i think that is a very good thing i think it's a very good thing and i think it's very good in like yeah i think it's a very good thing so if people criticize that then no see the positives of a situation see the positives not the negatives that's what i would say to you okay anyway uh perfectionist i was very a perfectionist during well i still am a perfectionist i'm a perfectionist in everything i'm more perfectionist now with schoolwork if i do something wrong i have to do it again and again and again and again and even if it's just revision notes and it's supposed to be scribbling and like jotting everything down it has to be done perfect or i can't do it so like it won't no it's got to be done perfect and it, it's very it's very exhausting doing this not gonna lie like it's quite exhausting this is kind of like obsessive as well like i feel like i'm obsessed with everything being perfect when i was younger it was like with toys and things in my bedroom and like my mom used to buy me Slovenian families which was just an absolute nightmare because there were just bits of it everywhere and everything had to be like perfect and everything had to be lined up and if it got knocked over it stressed me out for the whole day um yeah i spent most of my childhood lining up toys and playing with them imaginary in my head so i'd have these like dolls we'd have like i had the really big dolls like and yeah anyway i don't know if you know what i'm on about but i had big dolls and they all be sat straight like hair straight and i would never play with the toys i play with the toys in my head so i'd imagine the toys moving but they wouldn't move like like i said about schoolwork, i once got very stressed out about that and um 
everything wasn't done perfect like my maths homework this was in school this was like four years three years ago probably and everything was stressed me out and i got had a massive meltdown over this whole perfectionist thing and my homework weren't pe like perfection i was scribbling things out because i was getting my maths wrong and then it didn't look right so then i ripped the entire maths book out and threw it out of the window um so that was like a whole years of work well Oh, well, not a whole year. I'm such an exaggerator. Term, a term. I get like a new maths book of term, I think. So yeah, like like a couple of months of work, of maths work, um, in my core years, GCC years, and I ripped it up and threw it out the window because it didn't wasn't really up to my standard and I got really stressed out by it. But you know, maths is a very stressful subject anyway, so I just blame that. Um, and another thing when I was, oh my God, look at the time. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh my god, right, the time, time is to right, okay. Um another example of this would be when I uh, was a younger and mum used to buy me colouring books and if I go outside the lines, oh no, no. I think my mum regretted ever buying me a colouring book after that because me and colouring in <clears throat> I'm gonna cough. No, I'm not. Um basically, yeah, she used to like go buy me like a colouring book and it would if I went out of the lines, it would really stress me out, and it just whoo, whoo, whoo. no, 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 no. It was worth. She just regretted it. We are very deep thinkers, and we get lost in our thoughts, which was me half the time at school. I just think all the time. I'm always thinking. I zone out in conversations. I think about my own things, and I just think it's just because I'm just I'm more interesting than anybody else around me. To be honest, that's what I put it down for. I just thought, you know what, this conversation's boring me. I'm just gonna go in my own world now and think about something that is more interesting to me. Thing is, sometimes it's good things. Sometimes it's bad. I. This is the other thing. I overanalyze every situation in my life. Everything I do. I overanalyze brushing my teeth. I overanalyze washing my face. I overanalyze every single thing I do. And everything has to be planned. And I basically, when I say lost in my own thoughts, that's what I'm mostly doing is planning. If I do zone off, I'm planning what I'm having for my tea or what I'm doing for the rest and when I say what I'm having for my tea tonight, that'll be planned a week ago. I mean, what I'm having for my tea next week. That's what I mean. Everything I do is very complex and it can never just be done. I can never just do something. It'll be thought about 10 times over. If I go somewhere, I'll be thought, I'll be thinking about what's on the menu or what's, what everything about this place. And I will just, obviously, I will just think about it. And yeah, and that's what I mean by lost in my own thoughts. When I was younger, maybe less, maybe it was be better things that I'd get lost in my own thoughts where I think about like, like imaginary things and like my, like an imaginary world. Now it's probably just like, I don't really think about that. It's more like, like planning and like stressing and stress, being, being stressed basically. A lot of autistic girls do um, have anxiety and like OCD because everything is just overthought and so everything analyze everything and it can cause a lot of anxiety and i think it can cause a lot of anxiety because it is quite a stressful thing to do is always be in your head and never be in the present situation because i feel like i'm never in the present situation if i'm doing something i'm always thinking about something else and um, yeah i can never relax i cannot i'm always thinking this video is gonna be like a 40 minute video so yeah sorry Sorry, and you know what? I'm not gonna apologize. I'm not gonna apologize for that. It's my video. I can do. I can. If it's my video, you should be lucky. You should be lucky to listen to me for a full forty minutes. That's what you should be doing. You should be lucky. If you're gonna complain, we don't need that negativity. We don't need it. Okay, another thing. A lot of autistic girls are either mature or really immature for their age. Like two of them. I am both. An example of this is. I was 10, 10 I believe, 10, 11, and I was still watching Peppa Pig on a morning before school. I loved it. Peppa Pig and Ben and Holly's Little Kingdom, loved it. I still watch that now actually, still love it. I'd be watching Peppa Pig on a morning before school and I'd go get home from school and I'd be watching The Vampire Diaries. So, and I was about 10. So I'd say that's like a mature thing and a young thing. And then also I'm quite mature as in, I'm very like, I don't get when people are stupid. I'm like, what are you doing? Like, why are you being like that? Like, like I'm quite mature in that way. Like, I don't really, I never really understood like stupid behavior at school that other people, like other girls would find funny. Like when a boy, like boy did something stupid, I'd be like, what are you doing? Like, why are you acting like an idiot? Like, that's what I'd be thinking. I do think I have 
have quite like a level head um and I do get on with older people I have a lot more to talk about with older people than people that are either younger or the same age as me and I think that is because I am quite mature in some ways in other ways not so much like I said the pepper thing pepper pig thing but yeah and I also another immature thing I don't think this is immature but you know what people people might think it um I need like my teddy when I'm stressed out like it's or ill ill or stressed out I need my teddy like I need it and I don't know if that's immature or whatever or if it's just autistic but when I say immature I mean like other people non-autistics would think that it's immature but autistics wouldn't they just they understand that it's not in the char there's a reason for it what other than not said obsessive i have mentioned obsessive um and controlling i am obsessive with people sorry guys i'm obsessive with people yeah i'm not obsessed with but the, the difference is between boys is that boys can get very obsessed with computers science animal well maybe not animals but i know i don't they get obsessed with things i get obsessed with people like I get obsessed with Damon Savitar from Vampire Diaries. I get obsessed, which I think th th this is a different thing. Like it's not with boys, it's their obsessions is preserved as like murder or with girls, it's just, it's, a, it's more normal. Like our obsessions are more normal to them what a boy's obsession would be, which is ridiculous because at the end of the day, they're both the same thing. We both have the obsessive personalities just over different things. So that's one thing I can get obsessed obsessed over like tv characters and stuff like that and what i meant by controlling is i'm quite bossy and when it comes to people and if i'm involved in something like for example we went to america and i basically planned everything not because and to be honest i do think that this is because everybody else was lazy and didn't plan anything and then i just kind of felt like i needed to take control of the situation because nothing would have got done otherwise on average if we do have a family outing it is usually planned by me like even with friends like when i would i'm very stubborn i was very stubborn as in and controlling as in if someone wanted to watch something no no i would not watch it if i didn't want to watch it it had to be something i picked to watch or i wouldn't watch it i would be very stubborn in the fact that i literally would not watch it and i think this might have been very frustrating for friends because it'd be like i'd always be like oh, i'll watch your film after my film and i never would i never would i'd be like yeah i've watched my film i'm going home now bye and i never would actually watch their film because i didn't want to watch it another thing that i'm going to talk about which is a bit more um of a teenage thing is puberty and being a girl causes a lot of issues it has for me anyway i get very i get a lot of depressive bouts when i'm like pmt before my period is in like very heavily depressed um and i i i'm very i'm not a good person to be around it can be quite yeah i'm not a good person to be around and i think it is exaggerated for an autistic girl i get quite depressed i get quite angry i get quite frustrated and the whole of emotionness lasts for about two weeks so it's kind of a longer period of time now obviously it's going to differ for every autistic girl this might not be a case for every autistic girl however i have googled and apparently it is pmt and emotions and stuff of like period is quite severe for an autistic girl compared to a non-autistic um oh my god i'm losing my breath actually um so yeah i think i'm just gonna leave it there because i think i'm just kind of rambling on now and i've been rambling for all this video and like i said at the beginning of the video it is for all autistic people i am a girl so i'm putting it is in a girl and i have read up about all these things and apparently they are more common in girls so yeah i'm not just making it all up and just making it up so yeah anyway anyway leave it there follow my instagram if you want to get involved in all the q a stuff and you have any questions because i am going to be keeping track of all my questions and write them down and i'm gonna do a question q a because people have questions for me and i just i want to answer them i'm gonna leave it there subscribe if you like the channel etc etc goodbye